my sister, who came from the same womb as I did. Do you know any evil out of all the evils bequeathed by Oedipus that Zeus will not bring to completion for the two of us in our lifetime? There is nothing, no pain, nor disaster, nor shame, nor loss of honor that I have not seen in your sufferings and mine. And now, what is this new edict that they say the general has just decreed to all the people in the city? Do you know anything? Have you heard? Or does it escape you that evils from our enemies are on the march against our near and dear? No word has come to me of our friends Antigone, either bringing joy or bringing pain, since we two were robbed of our two brothers who died in one day by a double blow. And since the Argive army has fled during this night, I have learned nothing further, whether better fortune is mine or further disaster. I knew it well, so I was trying to bring you outside the courtyard gates so that you alone might hear. Hear what? It is clear you are brooding on some dark news. Why not? Hasn't Creon destined our brothers, the one, to be buried with honor, the other unburied without honor? Eteocles, they say, with due observance of justice and custom, he has laid in the earth for his honor among the dead below. As for the wretched corpse of Polynices, however, they say that an edict has been published to the townsmen that no one shall bury or mourn him, but instead leave him unwept, unentombed for the birds of pleasing treasure as they look to gratify their hunger. Such it is said is the edict that good Creon has laid down for you and for me. Yes, for me. And it is said that he is coming here to proclaim it for the certain knowledge of those who do not already know. They say that he does not conduct this business light, lightly, but whoever performs these rites, for him the fate appointed is death by public stoning in the city. This is how things stand for you. And so you will soon show your nature, whether you are noble-minded or the base daughter of a noble lineage. Poor sister, if things have come to this, what would I profit by loosening or tightening this knot? Consider whether you will share the labor and the task. What are you hazarding? What do you intend? Will you join your hand in mine to lift his corpse? Are you thinking of burying him, even when it's forbidden to the city? Yes. He is my brother, and yours too, even if you wish it otherwise. I will never be convicted of betraying him. Hard girl, even when Creon has forbidden it? No. He has no right to keep me from my own. Ah, uh, no. Think, sister, how our father perished in hatred and with loss of glory when, because of the crimes that he himself detected, he smashed both his eyes with a self blinding hand. Then his mother wife, a double name, with a twisted noose, destroyed her life. Lastly, our two brothers, in a single day, both unhappy murderers of their own flesh and blood, worked with mutual hands their common doom. Now, we in turn, we who have been left all alone, consider how much more miserably we will be destroyed if in violence to the law we transgress that the decree of power of tyrants. No, we must bear in mind first that ours is a women's nature and accordingly not suited for battles against men. And next that we are ruled by the more powerful so that what mean we must obey in these things and in things even more stinging. I therefore will ask those below the earth for pardon, since I am forced to do this, and will obey those who have come into positions of power and authority. It makes no sense to do what is fruitless. I would not encourage you, no, nor even if you were willing at some point, would I welcome you as my partner in this action. No, be whatever sort of sister pleases you. I will bury him. It would honor me to die while doing that. I shall rest with him, a near and dear woman with a near and dear man, being a criminal for having performed a holy deed. For the time is greater that I must serve the dead than the living, since in that world I will rest forever. But if you so choose, continue to take honor from the gods in honor, from, uh, take honor away from the gods in what they have established in honor. I do not take honor away from them, but to act in violation of the citizen's will, of that I am incapable. You can make that your pretext. Regardless, I will go now to heap a tomb over a brother who is most near and dear to me. Oh no, unhappy sister, I fear for you. Do not tremble for me. Straighten out your own destiny. 
then at least just close the stage to no one before you do it. Conceal it instead in secrecy, and so too will I. Go on, denounce it. You'll be far more hated for your silence if you fail to proclaim these things to everyone. You have a hot heart for chilling deeds. I know that I please those whom I am most bound to please. Yes, even if you will have the power, but you crave the impossible. Why then? When my strength fails, I will have finished. An impossible hunt should not be tried in the first place. If you mean that, you will have my hatred, and you will be in all justice an enemy of the dead. Believe me in the bad plan I have authored to suffer this terrible thing, for I will not suffer anything so terrible that my death will lack honor. Go then, if you so decide. And of this be sure, though your path is without thought, to your near and dear family and friends, you are near and dear. Straight and true. Shaft of the sun, fairest light of all that have dawned on the seven gates. You have shown forth at last, eye of golden day, advancing over dark streams. You have goaded with the sharper bit of the warrior of the white shield, who came from Argos in full armor, driving him to the headlong creek. He set out against our land due to the strife filled claims of Polynesius, and like a screaming eagle who flew over into our land, covered by its snow white wing, with a mass of weapons and crusty helmets. He paused above our dwellings. He gaped around our sevenfold portals with spears thirsty for blood, but he left before his jaws were ever glutted with our poor, or before a festus flying fed plane had seized our crown of towers. So fierce was Ares' crash of battle, swelling above his back, a match too hard to win for the arrival of the dragon. For Zeus detests above all the posts of a proud tongue, and when he saw them advancing in a swollen foot, arrogant in their clanging gold, he dashed with a brandish fire one who was already starting to shout victory when he had reached our ramparts. Staggered, he fell to the earth with a crash, torch in hand. A man possessed by the frenzy of the mad attack, who was just now raging against us with a blast of his tempestuous hate. But his threats did not fare, as he had hoped, and to the other enemies might Ares, mighty Ares dispensed each of their own dooms with hard blows. Ares, our mighty ally of the turning point. But the seven captains, stationed against an equal number at the seven gates, left behind their brazen arms in tribute to Zeus, the charner of battle, all but the accursed pair, who born of one father and one mother, set against each other their spears, both victorious, and who now share in a common death. But since victory whose name is glory has come to us, smiling in joy equal to the joy of chariot rich thieves, let us make for ourselves a death on us after the wars of just now, and visit all the temples of the gods with nightlong singers and dancers, and make Bacchus who shakes the earth of Thebes, rule our dancing. But look, the king of the land is coming here, Creon, son of Menaces. Our new ruler is in accordance with the new circumstances fated by the gods. What stratagem is he setting in motion that he proposed with this special conference of elders and summoned it by a general mandate? 